Well, joining us now is Jason Reed from Young Voices UK. Morning to you, Jason. I mean, what do you make of this? What's your assessment of, of where the nurses are lying within public opinion? Do you think they still have a, a suitable amount of public support? Good morning. I think their public support is waning. I think we're really reaching a crunch point here. As Will said in the report, a lot of other unions are accepting the government's pay offers now. Other healthcare workers in the NHS in other unions such as GMB have accepted the government's pay deals. But the Royal College of Nursing is sticking to its guns. And not only that, it's actually adopting a more extreme position than it has at any point before, because now it is refusing to grant the national exemptions that it has granted for past strikes, which means all kinds of people who weren't on strike before, like intensive care nurses and some emergency nurses uh, and some cancer nurses and so on, will be going on strike as well. They are digging their heels in. We heard after they lost their court case last week just how incredible it was that they didn't even turn up to their own hearing. The judge, I think, said that they displayed a high degree of unreasonableness. And that's not a political statement, of course. That's coming from an impartial judge. Uh, it, this is not the behavior of a group that is ready to negotiate, that's ready to sit down at the table and come to compromises, come to an agreement. This is the behavior of an organization that is taking a radical stance and is not willing to back down and is willing to hold the country hostage to get what it wants. I mean, Jason, what we're talking about now is half of England's hospitals, half of the mental health and um, community centres as well. I mean, this is going to cause significant disruption, isn't it? And it, there are going to be, there is going to be, a threat to patient care, isn't there? There is, exactly. We heard just a few days ago uh, from Great Ormond Street Hospital in London that they were in a really serious, critical situation, that they were unable to provide the ongoing care that their patients needed. I think we're probably going to hear more of that throughout the day uh, today and tomorrow while they're on strike. And if there are future strikes, we'll undoubtedly hear the same thing again, because it seems that the RCN is going to continue refusing to grant these national exemptions for uh, emergency and the most important nurses. I think it's an incredible position to be taking. They are uh, making clear that they're not going to back down here. I don't know what the end point is here. I hate to think of all the the excess deaths and all the people who are going to suffer with their health because they are missing out on the vital treatment and care that they need. Uh, it's just not a sustainable position to be in. It's not economically sustainable. The government isn't, you know, sitting on a big pile of money deciding whether to dish it out to the nurses or not. The government has to protect the public finances. Uh, they don't want to be raising taxes more than they have to. This money would have to come from somewhere. But the RCN doesn't want to hear it. They don't turn up to their own hearing in court. They don't appear to be uh, willing to negotiate, although they say they are. Uh, and so the, the government is in an impossible position here. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we always, you know, you've got, to, you've got to look at both sides in all of this. And at the end of the day, their members have said, look, it, it's not good enough. Uh, I mean, a lot of them saying, look what happened in Scotland, 6.5%, which is a significant difference. They're absolutely within their rights, aren't they, to say, we, we've got to do more. You know, you, you, you've got to actually reflect what we want. I don't agree that they are within their rights, actually, because they are putting patients in danger. And the Scottish nurses might have got a more generous offer, but the Scottish economy is not in a particularly enviable situation as a result of that. We've got all kinds of higher taxes and other issues in, in Scottish politics as well. As Steve Barclay, the health secretary, pointed out in that report as well, it's not as clear cut as the members unanimously just saying no. It was only about a third who actually went ahead and rejected the government's offer. Uh, and more fundamentally than that, if the RCN is willing to take this radical stance that it won't even provide the most vital, the most important of cancer care and so on, then how on earth is the government supposed to negotiate in good faith? The RCN had never actually voted for strike action before these past few months, but it, I don't know what's happened. They must have been taken over by some kind of militia to take this kind of extreme stance. Maybe it was all those people banging wooden spoons against pots and pans in the street that went to their heads. Who knows? But whatever the reason is, they are endangering everybody's health completely unnecessarily here and it's got to come to an end.
Mm. I mean, they will say, won't they, that this isn't just about pay, this okay. is about conditions, and they've been, they've been concerned about patient safety and the numbers of, of staff in wards for a very long time. They will say the patients have always been at risk, and, and this is just um, this is just, just the way it is, uh, and, and this is why they're going out on strike. It's really interesting, Jason, looking ahead to the, to the week that's coming up. On Tuesday, there's going to be a significant meeting, isn't there, between unions and ministers and NHS bosses. That's going to be between many of the unions, not just the RCN. But if an agreement is made there, then the nurses are going to get the money that's been agreed on by the other unions. Do you think if that happens, which it is likely to, the momentum will really be lost for the nurses because they have achieved that 5% pay increase? Will they continue to get the mandate and the ballot to go ahead till Christmas, do you think? I think you're absolutely right that the nursing uh, unions might find themselves backed into a corner here because there is a break within the union movement. This is no longer a case of all the unions standing up in a united front against the government because we've now seen a number of other unions representing nurses, representing other NHS staff like ambulance drivers and midwives that has accepted the government pay offer. And so it's no longer the mainstream union position for the RCN to be holding out like this. What they're holding out for, we don't know because they don't appear to be even willing to sit down at the table. They just want to take more and more extreme uh, striking measures. And so I really hope, to be honest, that that uh, negotiation does, that meeting does go ahead in the way that you describe and does succeed in effectively calling off any future strikes because this is incredibly dangerous. I just hate to think of all those patients and all those families who will suffer directly as a result of, the, of uh, what the RCN are doing if they really were concerned about patient safety i don't think that what they would be doing this i don't think you could have a clear conscience uh, to walk out if you're an intensive care nurse or a cancer nurse uh, and say that it was patient safety that was motivating you pretty clearly they just want to squeeze a few extra pounds out of the government our money of course that we're paying through taxes uh, and so it's just not a situation that the government should should give into and set a precedent for future strikes that this is an okay thing to do because it really isn't Jason, good to get your perspective. Thanks very much indeed.